back to Martins and More. My name is Mari Rutsch. And I'm Spoon Phillips. Excuse me, Spoon Phillips. I just have to turn off this humidifier before we start today's program. Ah, it's a good idea. I think I'm actually picking that up in my headphones. So, so, and hope, you know, probably the humidity will stay just fine long enough to get through the program. Um, so speaking of humidity, uh, we had a previous show where we were talking about, you know, what's Martin likes to call the care and feeding of their guitars. And we mentioned uh, Eumidophy, Eumidophy. <laughs> <laughs> famous old Greek playwright, Eumidophy. Um, no, we, we mentioned <laughs> humidity in, in the past at that sh in that program, but we decided to save that topic because it's not only is it a very important topic, but it's, uh, it is a pretty big topic because of uh, the fact that humidity changes uh, depending on where you live and depending on the time of year and even depending on what kind of uh, building or location that you're at. So, so um, I know that, that Maury's music cares an awful lot about humidity, but, but why is that? Is it because the Martins are made and Blue Ridge guitars are made with solid tone woods? Well, hold on. I thought you told me that we had to quit that podcast early because you had One Direction concert tickets. <laughs> Which is it? I think you're uh, confusing me with somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> and in all fairness, what was your question, man? I wasn't listening. Uh, what else is new? <laughs> um, the uh, no. What is the uh, humidity? We hear a lot about humidity. Humidity is important where guitars are concerned. Um, it's particularly important when you're dealing with guitars that are made of solid tone woods, but not just the guitars that are made of solid tone woods. Isn't that correct? Exactly. And it's probably fair to say the better the guitar sounds, it was probably built a little bit more on the fragile side. And conversely, you can really overbuild a guitar to make sure it never has any problems structurally. It's very, very resistant to temperature and humidity. And those guitars that are so robust, that a really dry environment, a really hot, humid environment doesn't make them change much. Well, a set of six strings doesn't make them move that much either. So the moral of this story for today's program, if you do have a guitar that's made with solid tone woods, or I should say real wood, and most importantly, a solid wooden top, you're probably in the category of somebody who has to watch out for that guitar getting too dry or too wet, too damp, and humidity certainly is something you want to watch for, even if it isn't the most extreme situations where your guitar is at risk of cracking. Keeping your guitar in the correct environment as far as humidity is very, very important. So I noticed when you walk into the Martin factory, um, not necessarily in the lobby, you know, in the visitor center, but the moment you step in the factory, you can tell you are in a very controlled environment. And the moment that you step in to Mari's music, you uh, can tell you're in a, a very controlled environment. So what do you keep the store, uh, your shop at, and where you store your guitars? What's the relative humidity? Now we keep everything here at 45%, give or take a couple points. It's our goal to keep everything exactly the way it should be based on what Martin does at the factory. So when a guitar comes from Martin and I drive it back here to the shop, except for the van ride home, these instruments stay in what they call 45% relative humidity. And it is true that when you take a guitar out into different environments, you know, whether you're keeping it in your car or in the trunk of your car or whatever, going from your house to your car to outside, if you're in the park, if you're going or, or you're going into a honky tonk or you're going into somebody else's home and all that, that relative humidity can change and sometimes quite abruptly. But in general, we're going to be talking about the stable environments where a guitar lives. And I thought it might be fun to do a little play acting. So I'm going to impersonate one of your many customers calling you up out of the blue with a question. So bring, 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 bring. <laughs> Somebody get the phone. <laughs> Andrew. <laughs> Maury's music, Maury speaking. Uh, Maury, I'm so glad I got you. Uh, this is Fred Wiffle over in Hooterville, and I have an important question for you because I am noticing that when I'm playing my guitar and I'm sliding my hand up and down, the metal frets, the ends of the frets, 
like they're starting to like scratch my hand and and they're getting kind of sharp and I can you know feel them when I used to not do that uh, do I need to like is there a way for me to like file down those fret ends so they're smoother and don't do that well, first of all, Mr. Wiffle, thank you very much for calling. I, I do have family in Hooterville, so uh, this call is important to me even before we start. Yeah, if you have a situation where you can feel the ends of the frets on your guitar, and in, in, in this case, whether it's acoustic or not, electric guitars can exhibit the same thing, I would caution you to see, is there an opportunity your guitar might be drying out? Can you speak to uh, the relative humidity you keep your guitar in as far as either in the case or in the room that you play? Do you have a nice humid environment? Well, I don't know. I've never thought about it. Um, let me go over here and see if we have one of those gauges on the thermometer here. So, so yeah, so it actually says 40%. So do you think, so that seems plenty humid to me, so that wouldn't cause the fret ends to get sharp, would it? Well, 40 is just a little bit on the low side. It's certainly passable, but we want to see your guitar in 45 to 50% humidity, ideally, and it all depends on how long it's been that way. And can I caution you to make sure you're not reading one of those meters that measures the outdoor temperature and outdoor conditions because it could be extremely humid in your hometown looking at the Weather Channel app on your phone. But we need to know what is the relative humidity in your guitar room. Well, yes. Well, yes. No, this is inside. It says it's 40%. So you're telling me that at 40%, the fingerboard is going to start shrinking enough that you can start to feel the fret ends. Is that true? Well, it sounds to me like you might be in a situation where the guitar's fretboard and neck have begun to shrink. And what I mean by that is the frets aren't going to move because they're metal. You're probably exhibiting a situation where the frets are staying where they were at the length they, they were from the very beginning, but the sides of the neck are just coming in a little bit just because of shrinkage. And it's one of those things, if the guitar gets a little bit dry, pieces of metal are going to stay where they were and the wood's going to move. So I think we're seeing the very beginning of your fingerboard and neck just getting a little bit smaller and that's going to give you the feeling of sharp fret ends. And when I say that, I really do mean this assumes that when you got the guitar back from the store when you first bought it, that it was proper fret wear and everything felt okay at the beginning. There are those instances where you could actually buy a guitar where the manufacturer just did a poor job of rolling the fret end. So could I ask you that? Is this something that's changing or has it always felt that way to you? Yes, it actually used to be just fine. I've only started noticing it recently. But so that's, so that's a problem with the fretboard. As, is there anything at risk in terms of the body of the guitar? Is there anything I can check in terms of my top or my back and sides? So yeah, if you're, if you're seeing a little bit of an issue with the wooden fretboard and the wooden neck, there's no reason to think it's not happening to the top as well. Can I ask you, when you run your hand across the guitar's top, uh, bass side to treble side, maybe you know, from the bass side of the middle of the top all the way across, do you feel any rippling or any sinking sensation? Well, now that you mention it, I can very clearly feel the grain lines, almost like the finish got thinner. Is that what you're talking about by, as rip, in terms of ripples? Well, it, the finish isn't really going to move as much, but what's going to happen is the entire top, if you would put your palm, say, on the, uh, on the top of the guitar below the bridge on the bass side, and then lightly, you know, don't try to scratch your guitar, but lightly move your hand, the palm of your hand, from bass E all the way across towards the treble E, and if it does not feel completely flat like a table or like a mirror, you will actually feel like your hand is going lower behind the bridge, when it goes to the middle strings like the G and the D, you'll actually feel a little bit of a pothole. And I don't mean anything really, really obvious, but you can slightly feel like your hand is going from north to south into a little puddle and then coming back to being high once you pass the treble E string. So you're trying to feel and uh, diagnose if anything's happening there behind the bridge of the guitar, what we call the belly. And if your guitar is dried out, it actually could be a little bit of a pothole. They're not so much feeling the grain as much as feeling just a little bit of a sinkhole, frankly. I see, I see. Well, that makes perfect sense. So let's say another customer calls you up. Bring, 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 bring. <laughs> uh, excuse me, Mr. Wiffle, would you mind if I take this other call? You're not that important oh, anymore. Oh, sure. thank you very much. Bye. <laughs> Bing, 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 bing. 
Now let's do it the real way. I don't have call waiting and Mr. Wiffle is my guy until he's done with me. So let's pretend you're not going to trick me here. Let's pretend Mr. Wiffle and myself, we have concluded our conversation and I did not race him off the phone line. And I don't know if that's my exact ring, but I'm going to give you a pass there. But now Mr. Right. Wiffle, thank you very much for calling. I'm going to sit down and see if the phone might ring again. Maury's music in a cartoon. May I help you? Yes. Hi, this is Hugh Briss, and I'm down here in Waco, Texas, and I got a problem right here, and I think I bought a guitar with a really bad top because it's really, it's now has this big sinkhole right behind the bridge. It has like sunk way, way down, and I think I was sold a lemon. You are not going to believe this. I just had someone on the line a minute ago that had the exact same problem. What can I do for you today, sir? Well, I'll be. So maybe you're selling guitars with sinkholes in them. No, well, I want to know why would it, because it was not like that. I mean, I got the guitar in the summer and it was perfectly fine. And now it's winter and I've got this big sinkhole and that, you know, it's like the top has really sunk down behind the, the belly of the belly bridge. Well, I'm very sorry. You, you're right. I actually am selling guitars with sinkholes, and I'm very sorry that you caught me. Um, before I before I stop selling such things, I do want to take this opportunity and help you. Even though you didn't buy it here, I'd like you to get this off your chest. You seem extremely upset, and I pride myself in enjoying the opportunity to speak to people just like you. Tell me more about your sinkhole. Well, it's uh, when I run my hand over the top, like I read on the internet. It's you know it. You can t just tell that it's sunken down but now it's gotten much much worse so why did that happen well let me ask you do you have a, a way of measuring the humidity either in your guitar's case or your guitar room um well i guess i mean i don't have one of those things but it's always in the winter it's always you know extremely dry you know my my nose it gets really dry my eyes get really dry and i know that it's usually uh, 30 percent you know humidity around these parts when when it's in the uh, winter that is going to be a little bit of a problem the first thing we want you to do is get a hygrometer because you've got to get a good handle on exactly what your humidity is until you really know that it's a little bit tougher uh, to remedy this situation and like i was telling mr wiffle you're going to need to measure the humidity in your room and what's going to happen is until you really know how dry or damp your conditions are you're not going to be able to attack the problem the way you should and it sounds to me like especially if you're correct guessing that it's 30 percent your guitar doesn't want to be that dry what's going to happen is you're going to have fret sprout like mr wiffle and you're going to have a situation where the top of your guitar not only could it start sinking like you're describing you could be in danger of it cracking in certain places so what we have to do is get you oh yeah it's it's very true and I, I know what you might be thinking, a lot of people listening to this program, I've got my guitar for five, six, seven years. I have never worried about humidity and it's fine. Two-part answer to that, you might have correct humidity if you're not sure that you don't. And there are going to be exceptions to the rule. I, I do have some friends that are very, very careless and they don't see any issues. What they don't realize is the next time they go into those situations in those environments might be the time something does happen. So it's an ounce of prevention versus a pound of cure. And what we need to do is get you to correctly monitor your humidity. And then once you realize where it's at, do everything you can to get the guitar in an environment where it's at approximately 45% humidity. And again, back to the beginning of this show, that's to expecting that we're talking about a guitar that's made out of wood. If anybody's still listening to this program that owns a rain song or McPherson or a carbon fiber instrument, you're off the hook. You're allowed to listen, but none of this will bother you because carbon fiber built instruments are built to be extremely, extremely, maybe completely resistant to these problems. So we are talking about wooden instruments when I say this, but uh, we've got to make sure your guitar gets up past 30% or you really are rolling the dice every time you take it out of its case. And it's, it's just the way I feel, it's, it's the way Martin builds their instruments. And it's not a Martin specific problem. Martin has the right idea. I'm sure other acoustic manufacturers, uh, you know, take the same approach to 
where their guitars are built, how they're conditioned, and what environment they can safely be in later. But you don't have to own a Martin guitar per se to be in part of this conversation. As long as we're talking about solid tone woods or frankly any kind of wooden guitar, these problems could affect you. Yes, that's a very good point. I think uh, I think it's also important to point out that there will always be exceptions where the, the, the environment is quite stable. And so there'll be plenty of people who say, I have an old dried out guitar and I don't even worry about it. But it's in a stable environment, even if it's a dry environment. And sometimes it's the change of humidity that can be the problem, particularly if it's a very sudden change in humidity. And there's lots of places in the country where it'll be dry like it is here now, but big rainstorms will come in and there'll be four days of rain and the humidity will change dramatically. And that's always a problem. New York City suffers from uh, radiators. So we get radiator heat in most of the homes in New York City, and that's extremely dry. So I keep my radiators off, except in extreme cold winter uh, storm situations. And because I have eight foot tall ceilings in a 120 year old building, it's impossible running humid humidifiers. It's impossible to get up to 45%. So you do the best you can and you try to keep things as stable as, po as possible. But I have to say, I have never seen a Martin guitar in Arizona. And I, I'm talking about seeing guys playing them in bars and stuff. My brother lives out there and, and, uh, and I have friends in Phoenix as well. I've never seen a Martin guitar that didn't have a crack in Arizona um, or it didn't have wow. the binding. It didn't have the binding loose and coming off. And granted, these are like real sort of journeyman musician, country singers kind of stuff. And, and these are their war horse performance instruments, but they just can, you know, it's just a, it's just a problem out there because it is so incredibly dry in the desert environment. So it's, uh, uh, you know, they play fine. They sound fine though. You might you can certainly get buzzing, uh, if the, if the frets, I mean, if the bracing comes loose, you get cracks on the, on the other side of the top and stuff like that. But like you said, ounce prevention, it's definitely worth going the extra effort uh, to try to get your guitar as close to between 45 and 50, as they usually say. Um, but we also can have the opposite. So there's people who live in Savannah. There's people who live in, in, uh, in the United Kingdom and the West Coast, uh, you know, in the forests in the West part of England, where it is extremely humid. And so you have the opposite problem. So you have, you know, relative humidity over 60% or even 70% in, in, uh, in, in certain places in the deep south of the United States. And like I said, in like the, we had a friend who lived in the forest of Dean and, you know, that where what they call damp is a problem there where mildew and all that stuff is a major problem in people's homes because it's so humid. And so what do you do when it's too humid? Well, if I could circle back to our role playing, you'd probably go give your guitar to Mr. Wiffle for a weekend and it'll be fine. <laughs> but no, what, what you'll want to do is if something's really too humid, you have to do what you can to get the humidity down. And a dehumidifier, you know, is certainly uh, on the list. What we haven't talked about much so far is exactly how to treat this. Do you treat it room wide? housewide uh, in the case in my opinion and this is this isn't coming from martin guitar or saga or any manufacturer but i'm of the belief that i want to play my guitars so the best thing you can do is to get the room to be correct so if you have a situation where like you're saying it's over humidified it's wet it's damp get a dehumidifier take the humidity out of the room so the entire guitar and its case and you uh, can be comfortable and when you're playing the guitar it's in a best environment if you can't get the entire guitar room, say you have a dedicated space to play. If you can't get that whole room the correct humidity, whether you're bringing humidity up or down, the next best thing, and it's still very important, in your case in New York sometimes in the wintertime when you said with those freezing storms, maybe both keep the room as humid as you can and keep the guitar in the case with a humidifier or a dehumidifier. And that brings me to my first uh, recommended product if you guys are listening and you're not sure what to buy, at maurysmusic.com we sell the Diodario Humidipack. It's a two-way humidification system, and it's two-way because it addresses this problem you're talking about right now. Not only does it add humidity 
when things are too dry, it takes some humidity out when things are too wet. So unless we're talking about extremes where the guitar is 70% or the guitar is 22%, when the guitar is within its uh, acceptable ranges where it's a little bit too, too high, a little bit too low, the two-way humidification system from Diodario is what I use, it's what I recommend, I see that it works, and it's not the only way to do things, but it's a set and forget kind of thing, and it's a situation where it's the one I trust the most, take this uh, podcast for what it's worth, you know, collect this data, and compare it to other reputable sources you can find, but coming from me, this is what I use every day, I've just got a D45 for Christmas, as some of you guys might know, it's in my home, which is not very, very humid, in December, January, but it's close enough, and it's in its case with the Humidipax, and that's the way that I, I I use it because I recommend it, and I recommend it because I use it. And you spoke of the hygrometers. You can also get hygrometers that fit in the case, um, so you can actually see what the humid humidity is inside the case. There are products out there now where you can actually have an app on your phone that monitors either the humidity in your in the room or the home or in a guitar case. And um, so it depends on how, how much you wanna go, but I definitely know people who use those kind of products. And, um, and some people uh, keep their guitars in their case all the time, but especially in the dry months. Others like to have it outside, which of course, outside of the case, which is very important in terms of having a stable room, uh, uh, you know, the humidity is stable in the room. So that, you know, there are various ways to do this. There are more affordable humidity products than that that you also offer, but they require a lot more maintenance because you have to continually uh, refresh the humidity and they're usually some sort of sponge product that holds, you know, that holds water uh, in some sort of housing and um, that the sponge goes into, but then you have to remember to keep that moist on a, on, you know, on a very regular basis. Now I have taken to, I've discovered by accident that the, uh, the typical cases that Martin's come in and other brands come in are not very good at holding humidity in. So the Humidipack system works very well for those kind of cases. But you may find that a gig bag actually does a better job than a hard case for uh, keeping you know, or the soft shell cases, stuff like that, um, like the Blue Ridges come in. Because they're a zipper, they, they will often have almost zero, they, some of them can be actually airtight. And if they're not airtight, they're close to airtight. So if you're in an area that's extremely difficult to keep the humidity up, and you want to have your in case humidifier last as long as possible, sometimes investing in a case that the guitar didn't come in that is much more airtight. Whether you're talking about those really super expensive flight cases that people who buy vintage instruments, keep, or, you know, very expensive handmade instruments will, you know, fork out the hundreds of dollars or even thousand dollars on those kind of cases. A uh, cheaper way sometimes is going with a gig bag or, um, but you'll need to test them, you know, you try them out and see if you know a friend who's got a gig bag, ask if you can borrow it and check it out, put a hygrometer in it, put your humidifier in it and see um, how stable it is. Because I have found all, all three of my guitars now are in much more inexpensive soft cases in the winter because that zipper helps keep the uh, humidity inside the case. That's a good point. And for what it's worth, I have heard results from customers going in both directions. I knew some customers that are unhappy with their inexpensive gig bag and the right kind of hard shell case was better. But the point being, not every enclosure is going to work exactly the same way. And just because something's going to protect your guitar from dings and scratches and, and uh, if something falls on it, uh, humidity and humidity retention should also be one of the boxes you check off when you're shopping for a way to keep your guitar safe. And I know once the weather gets nicer, I'm going to keep my D45 at home and I'm not going to be that nervous about the humidity. But in these temperatures now and this humidity, uh, this environment deems it very, very appropriate for that guitar case lid to be shut and locked. And I'm not even talking about my two cats being there. It's got to be humid in there. And when I go home after this work day and I want to play that D45, uh, I, I don't want to see the seam on the top where the left meets the right. I don't want to see that. I just want to play the instrument. And I know this this whole episode could be triggering some people who just don't want to be that kind of, I don't want to set anxiety your way. I don't want to make you, oh, great, one more thing to worry about. 
but it's so awful to find this out way too late. And a lot of our customers will tell me, you know, what's that thing I saw on your website about the Hygrama something? And they'll tell me they own five, six, seven guitars and they have no idea what their humidity is like. And I'll say, where do you live? And I'll be praying <laughs> that they say somewhere where it's like not going to be a problem. Like, you know, one of our good friends is on the West Coast. I think David Belcher was just talking the other day about accidentally his house is always like 44 percent and that's such a blessing and these people that say i i don't know it's probably uh i'm i'm in maine i'm like oh my god you know you go check your guitars right now and get off the phone it's it's just one of those things since we know what we know as musicians and music stores and and the the uh, information i glean from the manufacturers and we're Spoon and I are very good friends with so many people at Martin who passed through the R&D department. There are people that we know very closely that would beg us to tell you it won't hurt just to be conscious of this. Don't let us change your habits and I'm not going to make you do anything. But if you have the attitude that humidity doesn't mean anything and you don't care to know anymore, please, please just keep an open mind and uh, you know, you, you could spend two or three grand on a guitar and that's, that's easy to do these days. Don't laugh at the idea of spending 25 more dollars to get the humidity packs and make sure your guitar is fine. And it's not necessarily even an all-year thing. If you live somewhere, you might just have to really dress things up and, and attack the problem January, February, March. And once the spring comes, I mean, who am I kidding? It's not warm in April either, but uh, it's not a 12-month a thing. It's, it might just be a third of the time and you'll, you'll be happy that you did it. And here's the thing. If, if you waste your time and you waste the money... Uh, ask yourself, have you never spent 25 or 30 bucks on something music or guitar related to say, eh, I didn't really need that. This is just so inexpensive to be careful. It does blow my mind when, when somebody rings up, you know, a D41 and then they buy strings and they buy a capo and then you suggest humidifiers like, nah, oh my God, please don't. You don't care. You don't buy it from me, but please don't just laugh at the idea. You know, well, it's funny you should say that because the D41 and the D42 and the D45 and anything in those in that echelon comes with a bound fretboard, as does a D35. You can't feel your fret ends on a bound fretboard, so um, you that's you know that's so that very first symptom isn't even available to people with bound fretboards. So it is something to pay attention to and to look uh, for you know micro fissures and cracks in a in a fretboard or a bridge and and um and a lot of times okay so the strings are go up a little bit and the belly goes down a little bit a lot of times it is not a major issue but it can certainly become a major issue and uh we got a friend down in houston texas who uh has a very fine collection of some extremely fine instruments and takes very good care of them but he will tell you that he has individual guitars that act very differently in the same uh at the same humidity level so it really depends on the specific guitar as well so you may have a guitar that's much more sensitive that soundboard for instance is much more sensitive to uh, the relative humidity and another guitar very much like it that isn't uh, you know so why not be on the safe side when it comes to trying to protect your guitars and again it's trying like I said, I can't. There's simply no way I can ever get a room running humidifiers uh, nonstop. Um, I've gotten it up to 44 once recently when we had the major rainstorms come through. But I don't turn my radiators on. But there's heat pipes in certain rooms, including my bedroom and my living room, that sit over in the corner. So that's always drying out the the uh, my home and those giant ceilings. It's just impossible. So I do both. I have the humidifiers in the cases and I have humidifiers in the rooms and, you know, I do what I can do. Um, so, yes, some people do fret over it, so to speak, and others um, <laughs> and others, you know, just use common sense about it. And but having a hygrometer uh, really helps. There's a very inexpensive ones available online. Just do your research uh, and look at the customer uh, reviews and stuff as terms of how, uh, you know, and there's uh, review sites out there that test them and say, you know, we tried 14 of them and they were all within the same, you know, within 1% of each other sort of thing. And um, so, you know, I have them, I have them in, in every room that a guitar might be in, which for me is three rooms in my apartment. 
So I keep the, you know, keep an eye on them and try to keep up, you know, keeping the cases uh, as humidified as possible. Um, and uh, we should maybe point out that most guitar manufacturers' warranties do not include things that were caused by the owner, original owner, not paying attention to humidity, you know, over humidifying or under humidifying and all that. So that's also an important part. You can't expect Martin or a Blue Ridge to, you know, to uh, to replace your top because you, you know, you neglected it and let it, you know, go bad on you. So, and I have to say, that's never happened to me. I've, I've had, you know, tops with some sinking. I've had, you know, I've had humidity issues and guitars that have suffered from, from my own uh, absent-mindedness in times, but it's never been something terribly serious. But that doesn't mean, like Maria said, it won't happen in the future. So, you, you know, you do your best. Yeah, and that's really good advice. And I, I like what you were saying. Uh, you know, sometimes people want to look at a little bit of a less expensive idea. My first reaction is you're going to spend so much money on the guitar. Can't you spend 25 bucks? But I'll be honest, you have to refill those packets, you know, maybe once or twice every year. And if you have seven or eight guitars, that instantly becomes a problem that's not laughable at 25 bucks. You're talking about some real money. So I do know a lot of people on forums talk about making their own out of a sponge and a, and a bag. Uh, some people have figured out ways, and I haven't tried this yet, to take the humidipacks packs once they're spent and they don't work anymore. You can rehydrate them or reuse them. You know, that stuff is at least worth looking into. I won't recommend anything I haven't tried myself, but I can appreciate if somebody has seven guitars and you don't want to spend, you know, 25 bucks on the humidipack pack and then 16 bucks on refills a few times a year. I still think you should consider doing that, but I know some of our listeners have more than one guitar and this isn't just uh it's pretty flippant to me to say just spend the money that's your money and just educate yourself that if you can figure out a way i'd sooner see somebody spend three or four hundred bucks on a couple of humidifiers for the room and get that room really comfortable and then you don't have to buy any of these things and the bonus there uh, we haven't talked about this yet more than a half an hour into the show you'll be more comfortable the whole joke when you buy a guitar <laughs> And should I leave it in the trunk? Should I leave it in, in wherever? If you're not comfortable, neither is your guitar. Why would you want to sit in a room of 15% humidity and have your skin cracking, falling off? And all the things that, you know, your sinuses will appreciate and your lungs, it's, it's not, I mean, the opposite's true too. If your room is 81% humidity, that's, that's ugly. You're, you're, that's disgusting to your just everything in the room is going to get moldy and wet and damp and you wouldn't want your guitar that way either so if you're going to spend money but you're still not going to listen to my opinion about spending it on humidipacks consider getting a really good powerful or two humidifiers for the room this time of year i have to go from this studio that has one humidifier in it upstairs there's four humidifiers running in the big room and two small humidifiers running in the second room and we we just can't afford to accidentally go into the room that's not correct that's going to be problems for inventory so i, I do have some friends uh spoon i i think you've met j mac he actually tries to uh board his guitar here for the winter he has one guitar that's problems can i give my guitar back to you in december and you just keep it until the spring and and it's just there's there's a real great feeling of knowing that when you go into the room your guitar is fine you forgot to put it in its case no big deal try to get the room humidified first if you can i know it's easier said than done sometimes but uh, it's a, it's a luxury yeah not everybody has a, a room with a door that they can close you know that help that's extremely important to keeping the humidity going but um and the opposite is true too we have plenty of listeners that uh, do have the opposite problem you know, if you live in Alabama or, you know, Hong Kong, you know, your, your problem is over humidification. So you really have to, then you're talking about dehumidifiers. And again, it's worth it. It's worth it if you're particularly if you have more than one guitar to have a guitar room, as it were, and to keep, keep them that way. And, uh, you know, a friend I'll be seeing uh, tomorrow night, he does that himself. And he's playing mainly plays classical guitar, which is even more delicate. So, so he, uh, you know, he 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 belly aches every year when it's time to put the humidifiers on, and he rejoices <laughs> in middle, you know the last two weeks of May when he can stop doing it, and I'm right there with him. But uh, but it's really not that big a deal. Um, I I have a big you know a couple of big plastic water pitchers. I just fill them up and put them in. You know, I put it in my humidifier humidifiers every day. Just yeah, I'm just used to it. Just like you know brushing your teeth or you know. 
it's uh, it just becomes uh, you know a, a good habit to do and to have. So, so um, and what do you sell at, in terms of do you sell uh, gig bags? I mean, you have like products in terms of cases that you sell that are you know for people who want a gig bag that may have already have a hard shell case. Yeah, we we do sell lots of cases and lots of gig bags, and uh, the gig bag that I like to use is the Pro Tour gig bag from Blue Ridge. Now you have it on the forefront of my mind now. Before I go and recommend what to do there, you, you're making me want to go and do a test. I'm going to put a hygrometer and a, uh, a pack of Diodario humidipacks inside the Pro Tour gig bag. I'll do a little bit of a test myself before I can feel comfortable recommending that's a good uh, candidate for keeping the humidity, and I, I suspect it's going to be. Uh, but that's going to be on my homework list too. But yes, you can certainly buy cases and gig bags here. And again, this program isn't to do that. Uh, if you're getting the message and it's making sense to you, wherever you get your products, whether it's the humidifiers or the room humidifiers or the gig bags, uh, don't necessarily feel like you've got to do that much here. But take this knowledge and, and just uh, just be armed with, with knowing that you want to make this something you think about. Don't completely ignore the, the idea uh, if you have an opportunity to get your guitar in an environment where it's more protected, uh, everybody wins, where, no matter where you buy this stuff. But we definitely want to uh, admit this was a topic certainly worth talking about. And um, probably have a, a late-minute trivia question for you, Spoon. You made me think of something a minute ago. Sure. Go for it. You said your buddy is so psyched in May when he can finally turn off those humidifiers and, and things come back to normal. Here at Marty's Music, it's a little bit of a joke. We have these humidifiers running constantly up until say April or May, how many months would you believe Mari's music goes without having humidifiers running before they've got to turn on the dehumidifiers? Ooh, wow, that's a great question. I would say your, de your dehumidifier comes on around the 4th of July. That answer and more later in this episode. You're not going to hear it right now. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Um, <laughs> So what else do we talk about? <laughs> oh, we might be there. Well, we are kind of late. <laughs> we are later in the program. So yeah, maybe you should just go ahead and give the answer to it. Later that day. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it's been a really good show and I do owe you an answer. Maury's music has humidifiers running all winter long. Let's say probably sometime in April, those things finally get to turn off. We enjoy the month of May and the month of June and some of July. But by the time August 1st rolls around, we're already cranking those dehumidifiers. And it's just the way it is. If we do nothing else, we keep the local power company in business <laughs> with all the energy we spend here at Mari's Music. And it's just a labor of love. We cannot be here if our guitars aren't exactly the way they should be. And whether we're humidifying them, dehumidifying them, we're certainly keeping them the way they should be. And when you're looking to buy your next guitar, you need to know there is no place that takes humidity more seriously than Maury's music. I don't think. How could I know? Well, I think that's a fair statement. Uh, you, you, you didn't say you do it m more than anyone else, but no one else does it more than you do. And I, and I can attest to that. I've always been impressed when I walk in there and you just feel like you've walked in like through an airlock. And you're now in the spaceship, you know, with the perfect humidity, with the you know perfect <laughs> environmental control, and that's just like the Martin factory. Like when you, particularly when you walk into that wood acclimation warehouse, and you just know that you are in, a, you know, it's almost like being in a humid forest because uh, you get that wonderful smell of wood, and you get some of that at Morris Music too from all those guitars. So, so, uh, you know, I agree. If you can have a guitar room, make a guitar room. Uh, so you have, you know, relative humidity is stable and uh, and then you have a lot less to worry about if that's possible. So but uh, but it's an important topic. And um, and if you want to read up on this more, there is uh, an excellent blog post about humidification at Mars Music. And there's also like a quick quick guide as well. So like a quick fact fact, you know, page. So um, it's out there if you have any questions. So uh, humidify, that's the word of the day, humidify. Yes, and speaking of questions, if there's a question we didn't get to, or maybe this program has caused you to think of a good question, please let us know in the comments below if you're watching on YouTube, or you can always send it to us at support 
at marismusic.com. We definitely want to hear from you. Let us know in the comments what you thought of this episode. Let us know, are you one of those people who watches it very closely? Are you one of those players who doesn't pay any attention to humidity? And if you have a horror story that you're not afraid to share with us, uh, I don't want to say we'd love to hear it because that's terrible, but if your guitar has suffered from a humidity accident, and you think somebody listening or reading could benefit from knowing what happened and how to fix it, or more importantly, how to prevent it, please consider sharing it in the comments on YouTube. From all of us at Mari's Music, including all six of these humidifiers, thanks for listening. Hear you later. This has been a presentation of Mari's Music your trusted source for Martin and Blue Ridge guitars. Find us online at maurysmusic.com. Music.com.